All right, this is going to be the final video that we do of VCV rack patching. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I have created a new patch, and as always, I'm just going to select all the stuff that's in it and delete it. Right click, make sure I'm on the VCV brand, and then I'm going to start as usual with a MIDI 2CV, except, oh wait, we're not going to use that this time. In fact, we are going to do this with a sequencer. So no MIDI to CV is necessary. Instead, I am going to select the Seek 3 sequencer. Zoom in on that guy. And I do need an audio output. So we'll right click, audio eight. Uh, if I were on Windows, I would set it to WAS API on the top line, core audio on the back, and then I would set my device down here on the second line. But I am going to be doing some fancy loopback recording, so I'm going to set it to ASIO and then select my audio device, like so. So the sequencer works by going through at a defined speed, X number of steps. And the steps are represented in the different columns. I've got column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can set how many steps are played with the step knob. I can set how fast it goes with the tempo knob. And then I can take the output from a row. So row one up top, row two in the middle, row three at the bottom, and send that to something. Let's send it to a VCO. So I've got the VCO, and we're going to start with CV1 going into volts per octave. Now it's important to note that in fact, the sequencer is just storing voltage. It's not storing notes. It's not storing time. It's not storing uh, any information like that. It's just storing voltage. But let's take a look at what we can do with that. I'm gonna right click and create a VCF, a voltage controlled filter. I'm going to take the saw output of my VCO and connect that to the VCF in. Then I am going to create an ADSR. I'm going to take the low pass filter output of the VCF and we're going to connect that to a VCA. So let's create the VCA. Then we're going to take the envelope out of the ADSR and connect it to the VCA. And then our final output will go from the VCA to two device one, which is my left speaker on audio eight. Then I'm gonna hold down control on a PC, command on a Mac, I'm gonna take that and send it to two device two, which would be my right speaker. Okay. I don't hear anything, and I don't think you do either. So let's do a couple of things. Um, with the sequencer, I need to send something from the sequencer to the ADSR. So I'm gonna grab the trigger output and connect that to gate. Okay. It is triggering. You can see very small amounts of volume coming through, uh, but it's, it's too much. We need to make this a slower, or sorry, a faster attack by taking the attack down and raising our sustain. Then we're gonna decrease our release a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna de uh, disconnect the LPF output to VCA. You can see it's pulsing, it's working, but all the notes are the same. And the reason for that is that all the dials here on Seek 3 are set to the same position. So this is where it gets a little fun. If I right click on any device, I have the option to randomize it. I'm gonna choose that. And this randomizes everything 
So including if a step is triggered. If it's black, it's off. If it's white, it's on. So let's take a listen to that. Well, that doesn't sound very good. And the reason for that is that the VCO frequency is too high. So if I reduce that to the lowest possible point, it's a little bit better. But we need to do the same thing with the VCF. So I'm going to take that down as well. I'm going to hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and take the output of the envelope to the cutoff of VCF. I'm going to crank the modulation knob all the way up. I'm going to increase the res and then we're going to reconnect the low pass filter output to the VCA. Now, what happens if we try a different sequence? Well, not much. Let's hit reset and we're going to re-randomize it. So the secret here is to take our decay down to nothing. And then that is opening it up and we're getting more sustain. Switching that over to FM mode, I am modulating the frequency. And this allows me to dial things in a little bit better. Um, I can also play around with the VCF 
cut off. But a lot of it is always figuring out what uh, the values are that I want to use uh, for the cutoff, for the envelopes, where everything is going to really sit at. And of course, I can always manually set the values so that it doesn't get too hot uh, or too high pitched. Oh, <laughs> there it is. and run to stop. Uh, so you can see this is a little finicky. You do have to play around with this in terms of the filter frequency, the VCO frequency, and especially the ADSR times. If I have really, really high uh, attack values, it's going to uh, get stepped on by the sequencer. If I have really, really low release values, it might cut off too soon. So it's always a question of, is the tempo too fast for the envelope? Um, is the sequence too high or too low for the frequency knob of VCO or VCF? It requires a lot of playing around to find the perfect setting, but when you do, it can be really cool. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that you can also use the sequencer to set different values. I could take the output of sequencer 2 and use that, for example, for the, uh, the cutoff or the resonance of the VCF. And that would sound like this. So again, keep in mind, it's storing voltage, not pitches, not uh, rhythms, just voltage. But again, uh, a lot of options with this. You have to play around with it a lot more than you do with other patches, but it can be very rewarding. So play with it, and hopefully you will get some interesting results.